Like, weirdly enough, I think some narratives nowadays think they have to explain everything. Like to give, like to go back to Halo briefly. I think 343's biggest mistake in Halo Four was showing us what a Forerunner actually looked like. And like, I don't care if Forerunners are human or not, it, I'm indifferent to it. I know that like some people think they should have been, some people think they shouldn't have been. But for me it doesn't matter, my problem is that we got to see a Forerunner in the flesh, and it completely ruined the mysticism of the species. Because like, the, the idea that all the Forerunners were gone, and you know, all the stuff they left behind was essentially yours to be reclaimed now. Like, you inherited it. It was interesting. But then the Didact shows up, and it's kind of just like, oh, they're just dumb fish face people, and for some reason now they have dumb bug robots with teeth that they never had previously, and after Halo 5 would for some reason never have again. Even though Forerunners have never made tech that looks like that up until then, because they always seem to be a very function of a form people who didn't care about impressing anyone with aesthetics. They cared about getting the job done. So it's like, to me, we never should have been introduced to a living Forerunner in Halo, because now all of the mysticism is ruined. Ah! Shit. God damn it. Well, not ruined, just diminished. And again, that's just my subjective opinion. I'm sure some people out there really like the Didact for some reason. I mean, to an extent, yeah. I mean, one of my favorite movies is uh, Evil Dead 2. And Evil Dead 2 is not subtle at all. They're all over the place. Yeah. Actually, on the topic of the Didact, I want to vent about something else that irritates me about not just Halo, but a lot of narratives that involve the big bad. Uh huh. Let me fight the bad guy. <laughs> like, when. Fucking. When you meet the Didact in Halo 4, he immediately just uses a telekinesis force grab on you and immobilizes you completely. Which diminished. And that one moment ah! diminished any interest I had ah, in the Didact for one, for one specific reason. Why not just kill Chief if you can immobilize him whenever you want? Like, just immobilize Chief and have one of your Promethean Knights run him through if you don't want to do it yourself, but the Didact doesn't do that. He just force grabs you, holds you there for a bit and does nothing, then lets you go and walks away three separate times throughout the game, and the one time you actually counter him is when Cortana's so far into rampancy that she has to compartmentalize herself into the freaking system. And use the heart light bridge to hold him down so you can shove a grenade in his chest. And then the Didact goes out like a chump in a comic. Off screen. Like, if they absolutely had to show me a Forerunner in the flesh, at least give me the ability to fight him. Fucking Halo 2 let you fight one of the Prophets in an actual boss fight. How is Halo 4 taking a step back and not letting you fight the big bad? Oh, I'm sorry, they do let you fight the big bad in a fucking quick time event. And it's just... <laughs> and I know I said this wasn't just a Halo problem, and it isn't, because a lot of games don't let, well, a lot of stories and movies and games don't give a satisfying fight against the big bad. Like, in Marvel, like, both in Infinity War and Endgame, no one actually gets to fight Thanos. Like, they kind of just tackle him a bit, and then he throws them away. Like, even Thor, who has Mjolnir and the Stormbreaker Axe at the same time, mm -hmm. couldn't fight him, and the Stormbreaker Axe almost one-shotted Thanos, and was designed to kill him in the first place. So what the fuck was going on there? And just... 
Like, this guy you're fighting right now, this is like Sigma, right? Yes. And he's the big bad? Yep. Like, this is good because, you know, you're fighting him. You get to actually fight and hit this guy. And it's not just him curb stomping you until the story says that you get to hit the magic win button now. It's like, how is this friggin' old-ass pixelated game able to give you an actual fight against the big bad when most modern games and blockbuster movies can't even give you that? <clears throat> like, am I expecting too much? Like, is it wrong to expect action from a fucking action movie? Or action in a fucking action game? Am I crazy? No. It's like, fucking... Just give me a boss fight where I can shoot the didact in his stupid fish mouth. Break off his stupid magnetized armor. Freaking blow up his stupid bug robots with teeth. And destroy his stupid fucking composer. Anything other than a shitty little fucking quick time event where I set off a nuke at the end that somehow doesn't kill me because hard light box with nothing to sustain it. Just let me fight and earn the fucking win against the boss. It's not hard. I'm literally watching a game from compared to Halo 4 ancient times pull this off. I can see it. <laughs> I'm not saying give me a sword fight against the Didact. Give him a gun and take away his stupid telekinesis powers. Because being held Ouch. still in a sort of nope, can't do nothing, I've got you now, haha, <laughs> isn't fun. And I just realized I'm kind of just rambling now. <laughs> nah, it's fine. I find that when there's less people to bounce topics off of, I kind of just find things to, like, vent about. Well, it's also, you know, like, the attempt to just fill in the void and not having, like, this pocket of silence. Yeah. Like, it's like, I could go on for days about, like, fucking my problem with Halo 4 and 5's villains and just how 343 treats Halo villains in general. Like, how between the Didact, Julem Dharma, and Cortana, fucking, like, they're all introduced in a game, and are dead <laughs> by the next game, and accomplish very little in the time they're given. Oh. And it's just... <laughs> it, it's... wow. Oh, boy. Also, oh shit, he's a Megazord. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Fucking hell. Nope. Also, I know this was kind of just the way the games did it at the time and its rule of cool. I can forgive it for being a product of his time. But oh, this big, this big hulking it. mecha is like, he's in this big hulking megazord and like, all he does is throw his freaking friggin' claws at you. Like, doesn't do anything else with the big hulking mech body he has now. He he's, he just paws at you. <laughs> he literally paws at you. Yeah. <laughs> like a big cat. Nyeh. Got you. Nyeh. <laughs> also... I hate that this game makes you kill, kill his dog before you fight him. Yeah. Like, why you gotta make me do that? The dog probably doesn't even want to do this. Yes, I know it's a robot, but it's still a good boy. All dogs deserve better, even robot dogs. Shit! Ah, damn it. Damn like, it! Even if, like, even if Sigma did nothing else wrong, I feel like this right here is reason enough to despise him. <laughs> no, it's the same kind of thing about, like, if somebody abuses, uh, like, animals. Like, I, what, I, like, one of my favorite lines or phrases that Solar and Myth said 
and I'm trying to remember it um, as much as I could, saying that if you abuse animals, you deserve to have some kind of punishment that, what was it? Like your fingers wrapped in barbed wire and yanking in all different directions pulled by tortoises. That's, I don't know. There's something very comedic about that mental image, despite the serious tone. Oh, absolutely. It's just like, just, it's like, I don't know why, but I envision the person kind of just sitting there looking confused as the tortoises kind of just slowly neander their way in random directions. And then occasionally he's just like, ah. <laughs> Because, like, I understand the idea is it's supposed to be slow and painful, but, like, I feel like the simple action of moving your own hands independent of them would make- would hurt more than the actual turtles moving. There are some things I found out about that just, like, grinded my gears. So, have you ever seen those, uh, metal restoration videos? metal restoration okay so basically they take an old object that's covered in rust and they polish it up and they grind away all the rust and they try to reinvent some of the metal for it or try to renew the metal in it and it resorts back into its original condition if not more apparently there was a video that demonstrated that all that rust was all paint to make it look like it was being restored and what's worse the uh there was at least one channel that I rem um, one channel that was mentioned that before it did metal restoration, it was like animal restoration. So they would take a sea turtle, put a bunch of shells on there, like literally glue on the shells, and then pry it off afterwards on film, making it look like it's trying to help the turtle, and put it in the wow. like put it in like a freshwater sea or something, or turtles That's... that belong in freshwater are put into the ocean, which is like that is acidic. You are a sick fuck. That is... It's probably coming from a place of ignorance, but yeah, no, that's... Mm. Yeah, no, I saw that, and I was just absolutely enraged. And I was like... Because that used to inspire me to try to restore things, but then it's like... It's it's a false narrative. And you, yeah. just, feel, you just felt ripped off. It's... Like, I imagine it is possible to, like, you know, restore metal. But, like, the moment I heard restoring animals... No. In the back of my mind, I'm just like, no. That, that, that is ridiculous. It's like, fucking... First of all, if there is a turtle who, for any reason, has natural shell formations on their shell, or naturally just have things attached to them, if it hasn't bothered them up until you showed up... It probably won't bother them if you leave it. Also, extra armor. <laughs> it's like it's not like it can make them move any slower. Ouch. It's like it's like if I was a turtle and I had a bunch of like shards and stuff fused to my shell, it's like, okay, I'm harder to consume. Because I have a spiked shell. I'm literally a Koopa. This is an evolutionary advantage. What the fuck is that? Ungoldens your fox? I do <laughs> not understand. Okay, so there's a meme format in which someone says... Okay. What's a what's a good example I can give you? Ouch. So, um... You know the cosmic... Have you ever heard of the cosmic brownie? No, I haven't. Okay, well, the best way to describe it is it's a brownie with a bunch of M&Ms embedded in it. <laughs> uh -huh. Or things that look like M&Ms embedded in it. And the best example of this Shit. meme is fuck you, uncosmics your brownie. And it's just them taking the M&Ms out of the brownie. <laughs> so when so so if someone said fuck is like, if someone said fuck you, ungoldens your fox, it's just taking the gold off of the fox, basically. It, it, the, ah! the meme is literally, fuck you, take something from you. It's... It's funny malice. <laughs> like... Ah, oh, damn it! Ah, oh, shit! Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. 
Uh, I'm trying to think of something that works more, because Ungoldens Your Fox doesn't really work. I used to rely on the expressure taken on this guy because I didn't know about the weakness that's until word of mouth shit. Hmm. <clears throat> Ooh, okay. What's a good example I didn't use? Oh, here's one. Fuck you, unsupers your Mario. And then it's just a clip of Mario getting hit and then shrinking down. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of works like that. It's like, it's literally just, fuck you, reduces something of yours. Uncosmics your brownie, unsupers your Mario, that kind of thing. Uh, nope. Still trying to find a way you could realistically ungolden a fox. I guess it would be changing your OC's color scheme to just a normal fox color. I guess. So like, the the image would just be golden fox, but more orange. I almost there. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think there's a way to ungolden the fox because you're orange either way. <laughs> <laughs> So, to whoever posted that in the chat, you you can by turning it silver. Oh, so you you, you just bleach his coat. <laughs> okay, one more blast. One more blast. Ah, oh, there. There you go. That's the X-Buster challenge. Yay! The only times I ever used any of the weapons were just to obtain certain items that I would... Um... Uh, that I would not be able to reach without. Oh. I love that. X, why have you done this to me? And I'm just like, well, I mean, to be fair, you swung first. I just swung last. <sighs> the war has ended for now and peace has been restored, but for those who sacrifice themselves for the, come on, victory will never return. Until he does in the next game. <laughs> I know, because we, you know, we know who they're talking about. <laughs> Exhausted X gazes at the destruction he helped cause and wonders why he chose to fight. Was there another way? I mean, no. X was designed to be a fighter, a warrior. Wait, is this a prelude to that one game where X spends 90% of it as a fucking whiny pacifist? Oh god, you're not talking about X7, are you? I think I am. <laughs> X7, I think was I might be. X7 was absolute gutter trash. That's so dumb. That is so dumb. <laughs> it was, and they put this new kid in there named Axel, and it's just... Personally, like, okay, X5 was supposed to be the last entry, but because the Mega Man X series made a lot of money, Capcom decided to continue them because money matters more than quality. And you had X6, which was a garbage game. You had X7, that was a garbage game. I can't say anything about X8 because I haven't played it. The fact that there's an X8 after X7... <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck do I say to that? <laughs> we do not mention X7 in this Christian-ish household. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is actually funny. That is unironically funny, actually. Uh, flame mother also fucking Haynard? He was extremely obnoxious? Flame Hyenard. Hyenard, okay. Do you, um, was he do you in... not know about that? No, I'm guessing that was a boss in X7. Because the most yes. that I remember are... I just remember the earlier entries. Okay, so... Golden, I have a suggestion for you. Okay. 
I want you to search up a video of Mega Man X7 Flame Hyenard and just listen to three seconds of his boss fight. Alright. That should tell you all you need to know. Also, hi, Al. <laughs> we have reached the end of the game. You still streaming? Yes, I think. Ooh. What the hell? You, you get it? <laughs> like, already the footsteps were starting to get irritating, but that... <laughs> yeah, it just, no. It's just nothing but agony. <laughs> those is like, those three seconds, that's all the high and hard boss fight is. Just that. The whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> 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 Renaki, I looked up um, Flame Hyenard and oh dear god. <laughs> yeah. That's another way of just saying it's oh dear god. <laughs> the other being, um, what was his name? Uh, the Bluish Pony who made like. Some kind of OC reference where his face is completely blank. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> like the Everything I know about X7, I got from a video that Wamboo did. I can't remember who they did it with, but they they basically talked about the whole game, and their section talking about High and Nod was hilarious. Because, <laughs> like, the reason I told you to listen to just three seconds of High and Nod's boss fight is because that's exactly what they did in the video. They were like, okay, we're going to play you three seconds of this. And then they did, and then they're like, that. Oh, All of the noise you just heard is in three seconds of this. <laughs> and the boss fight is significantly longer than that. So, if you meet anyone who is uninitiated with it, and you want them to understand the problem with Hyenard, just ask them to play three seconds of his boss fight audio. <laughs> it is all they will ever need. E? It's Wimdy. Yep. Wimdy. You it have won Wimdy. a temporary victor, X. What you destroyed was only a temporary body. My spirit Don't remains intact. <laughs> a temporary. <laughs> spirit, you're a robot. <laughs> <laughs> no, in time I will find other bodies strong enough to do my bidding and I will return. I shall see you soon, X. Very soon. Yeah, and I kick your ass like God knows how many fucking times in the later entries. That was the X Buster <laughs> only. <laughs> That's. <laughs> uh, I hope the rest of you guys have a good night. <laughs> this was hilarious.